a film crew is used to dealing with the unknown. That's what we do. The waves were growing. They were getting huge and gray. This was going to be more of an adventure than any of us had actually signed up for. We found ourselves in the middle of a major hurricane. The sounds are horrific. It's literally like 12 freight trains barreling down on you. We didn't know if the hurricane was going to rip through the ballroom as well. Do you think that we might die? From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantori. Jurassic Park, one of the most beloved films of all time. But what many fans don't know is that for director Steven Spielberg and company, the action behind the scenes rivals the terror on screen. It was an adventure film that became an adventure in itself, but a serious adventure. It was something that was potentially very, very dangerous. While filming Jurassic Park, the cast and crew battles an enemy more ferocious than any T-Rex, Hurricane Iniki. The Category 4 beast tears the film set to shreds and transports the island of Kauai back to the Stone Age. August 24th, 1992, Steven Spielberg and 139 cast and crew members gather on the island of Kauai, Hawaii to start filming Jurassic Park. They're talking about a tropical paradise, and it, it was that. It was beautiful. It was uh, warm, and the vegetation, and the trees, and the animals, just incredible. The first night on the island, the production team gathers at the edge of a waterfall for a traditional Hawaiian ceremony to bless the film. It felt really good. I felt all the, the excitement of being there in this new place with all the cast around me. We were getting ready to jump off into a new adventure together. The intense three-week Kauai shoot starts without a snag. It was one of the best experiences of my life. It wasn't like going to work at all. You really had a sense of family. Legendary director Steven Spielberg brings dinosaurs to life as he leads his team of actors through the scenes. It was great working with Steven Spielberg. The, the atmosphere on set is exciting and exhilarating. He's energetic and the enthusiasm about going up about things is, is really something that's marvelous to be part of. He was just so real and down to earth, and at the same time, he was able to, to teach us a lot. And after we would nail a scene just the way he wanted, he would jump up and shout, that was fantastic, and run over and give us a hug. But shooting outside presents a major obstacle, rain. Locations like Olakele Canyon, located near one of the wettest spots on Earth, wreak havoc on the production. It would just pour and rain and then stop, and then boom, we'd try to get out and shoot a scene, and then boom, and the rains would hit again. The filmmakers have no idea that these rains pale in comparison to what is to come. On September 9th, a hurricane forms southeast of the Hawaiian Islands. Known as Iniki, it churns across the warm waters of the Pacific Ocean. It was uh, El Nino year. The sea surface temperatures were still one to three degrees warmer than normal. You think of a hurricane as a heat engine that lives off the warm sea surface temperatures that sort of fuels the storm system, and that's exactly what happened with this storm system. Iniki strengthens, and by the next day, it blasts wind speeds of over 100 miles per hour. 170 miles south of Hawaii, the hurricane makes a drastic change in direction. During the end of summer, we have what's called a trough that forms west of the state. And you could have some pretty strong southwest winds on the right side or the east side of that trough. And if you imagine sort of this train track that heads up to the north, that's what was sitting there as Iniki started to work its way westward. The hurricane slams into that trough, which pushes it north, straight towards Kauai. On Kauai, the cast and crew are only one day away from completing the three-week multi-million dollar shoot. For actress Ariana Richards, there is another reason to celebrate. It's the day before her 13th birthday. On the set, the Jurassic Park team has a surprise for the young star. 
they had this beautiful cake for me with happy birthday Ariana written on it. This is the first cake that's been lit this way. And all the cast was there and everyone celebrated with me and it was, it was really special. I felt so touched that they put this together. Yay! What bad thing could happen on my birthday, right? As Ariana and the rest of the crew finish up the day's shoot, they are unaware that Hurricane Iniki is on a collision course with Kauai. September 11th, cast members like Sam Neill wake up to urgent news. And they said, you won't be going to work today. We're in a change of plan, there's a major hurricane that's turned its course and is now coming straight for us. I was astonished. It's that kind of no school today feeling and um, we get to play hooky and this is gonna be fun. And then, do you think, actually, this could be quite serious. Co-star Martin Ferrero and his family take the news of the hurricane very seriously. Martin's nine-year-old son, Joseph, suffers from autism and is prone to having seizures. With the humidity and the heat, he was susceptible to having another seizure because those things can trigger a seizure. It's pretty alarming. The cast and crew are told to assemble in a makeshift shelter in the hotel's ballroom. It's too late to dismantle some of the film's elaborate sets. Before leaving his room, Martin takes some last minute video. The waves started to get angrier and angrier and we realized that we were gonna just have to turn the camera off and pick up our children and go down to the ballroom. As we say goodbye. Downstairs, Ariana Richards and her family check out the surf near the hotel. We were walking by the ocean where we had been swimming and having such a beautiful time for all these weeks, and it was transformed. The waves were growing. They were getting huge and gray. As Ariana heads into the shelter, she sees a sign of things to come. There were about a dozen swans that were there. And I was really worried about the swans, actually. And I didn't know how they could survive with the hurricane coming. At 12.45 PM, stunt coordinator Gary Himes uses his video camera to document the deteriorating conditions. There's waves completely going over the top of the seawall now. I started just taping the storm surge as it was you know, rising. And eventually, this seawall, uh, which is normally about 15 feet was literally underwater. Uh, we've got about another, they say, hour before we have to mandatory get into the shelter. Inside, the crew readies the ballroom for impact. They set up lights and generators in case they lose power. The craft services department stockpiles snacks and water. You know, I've always felt that if I was ever trapped in a disaster, that I would want to be there with a film crew. There's no sort of skill that you need that isn't on a film crew. As cinematographer Dean Cundy prepares to hunker down, Steven Spielberg makes a thrilling request. Steven came to me and said, you know, we ought to get a couple of shots of this really great ocean. So uh, I said, great. Steven, Dean, and a small camera crew head out to the beach to capture the hurricane on film. We were watching as the waves would get bigger and bigger and and uh, pretty soon they were uh, pretty huge. The situation becomes dangerous as 25-foot waves barrel toward the coastline. One of the hotel security guys came down and said, you know, it was no longer safe that we had to now go to the ballroom. Steven Spielberg and his crew retreat to the shelter. Within minutes, Hurricane Iniki crashes against the southern coast of Kauai. What seemed like a carefree adventure soon becomes a nightmare as 145 mile per hour winds batter the hotel's ballroom. The sounds are horrific. It's literally like 12 freight trains barreling down on you. The sound of the, the wind hitting against the buildings and the trees and, and the sound of the waves crashing. It was very loud outside. And the buildings shook and um, there was no question that you were in the middle of something really, really major. The glass chandelier begins to tremble. The power goes out. Water infiltrates the ballroom. The walls are closing in on you. It seems like with the chandelier shaking, the unpredictability of what would happen next gave you pause. 
We didn't know if, if the hurricane was going to rip through the ballroom as well. Will the room collapse? Will it be blown away around our ears? What will happen? September 11th, 1992. Hurricane Iniki ravages the island of Kauai, Hawaii with 175 mile per hour wind gusts and piercing rains. The rain comes in horizontal sheets. You go, oh my God, how is that happening? The Jurassic Park film crew holds up in the ballroom of their hotel as they witness real life drama that trumps any Hollywood special effect. We would sneak out and look into the courtyard and there were palm just flying completely horizontally sideways and the swans from the, the pond were flying you know sideways backwards it was pretty amazing you see a roof rooftop just lift up a little bit and then you just happen to just turn your head and all of a sudden you look and the whole rooftop is just gone and you go oh my god he just takes your breath away the shelter is no longer a safe haven as it begins to come apart at the seams i felt water dripping on my forehead and as I looked up, you could actually see the ceiling raising and lowering. There was water coming in different places. The ceilings were leaking. It seemed like a real dangerous place. Without power in the shelter, the crew cannot get updates on Aniki's wrath. But stunt coordinator Gary Himes has a battery-operated radio. So I was able to get weather reports from NOAA. Um, the only problem was I had to go outside to get these weather reports because it wouldn't work indoors. Steven Spielberg asked Gary to find out the latest news on the hurricane. Gary's tools of the trade come in handy. By that point, it was really blowing, so I, I went ahead and put a full body harness on, which is essentially like a climbing harness, and had uh, some of the stunt guys rig me up on a safety line. Gary heads out into the melee. He can barely stand on his feet as deadly winds punish his body. And just as I'm about to, you know, dial up the volume where I can hear it, a gust came through and literally took my feet out from under me. I felt like a flag on a flagpole. I was literally horizontal with the building, trying to hold on to the radio. And it had not been for my guys uh, on my safety line, um, I would have just taken off, set sail. Gary is shaken as the stunt team reels him in. Stephen asked me, so Gary, you know, what's the latest? And I said, Stephen, the radio quit working because there was no way I was gonna go back out there. Inside the ballroom, the mood is intense, but the cast and crew keep each other calm. There's a lot of comfort to be had in company. We had Stephen who's entertaining, and we were kind of happy to be together. It would have been a, a, a scary and miserable experience if we were all stuck in our individual rooms. Steven Spielberg makes it his mission to entertain the children and keep their minds off of the devastation outside. He would just come and sit next to us kids and play cards for hours on end. And laugh and play and keep us occupied. Stephen also treats the kids to his specialty, storytelling. He told us ghost stories that actually scared me more than the hurricane itself. We were captivated sitting there listening to him weave these tales. It really comforted us and I'm touched looking back at it that he spent time with us that way. By 6 p.m., Hurricane Iniki leaves Kauai. The cast and crew emerge from the shelter to an island that is unrecognizable. Iniki crushes almost every home on the island, and six people are dead. All the palm trees were just sticks. You know, all the branches and leaves are gone. We saw houses that had been trashed, and it was a very vivid thing. Walls were blown off of buildings, and metal was actually wrapped around telephone poles. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I had just experienced this island for, for five weeks in its glory, and then all of a sudden, to see it completely decimated, it was terribly sad. Iniki rips the film's multi-million dollar sets apart. Our sets that had been built by our art department were completely destroyed and uh, were never seen again. And they were just blown away. 
Ariana Richards finds a bright spot in all of the chaos when she checks on the swans who spent the hurricane battling killer winds and rains. The swans were still there. I was glad they were alive, but my goodness, everything was so different. The next morning, the hotel staff posts a sign in the lobby. It says, Aloha, we have no water, we have very little food, we have no phones, the roads are closed, and the airports are closed. But we do have Aloha. Immediately, the Jurassic Park crew springs into action to help get the hotel back on its feet. Without a doubt, a film crew is the most resourceful bunch of people because we have, you know, all trades are involved. We can build it, we can blow it up, we can build it again. Um, there's not much we can't do. The catering department passes out food and water to guests and staff while other crew members activate generators to provide electricity. Head Greensman Danny Andreco spent the past three weeks helping to create Jurassic Park's majestic jungle sets. Now, he's in charge of clearing the roads. I got all these guys together and I said, hey guys, here's what we gotta do. Open up my trucks, got my chainsaws out. These guys got on forklifts and we just started doing it. Within five hours, Danny and his team clear nearly one mile of road. But with the airports closed, the cast and crew are stranded on Kauai. We had the rest of the film to make, and you got a delay like that, uh, that can be, you know, sort of disastrous for your budget and for your schedule. Actor Martin Ferrero and his wife are relieved that their autistic son Joe has made it through the storm without having a seizure, but their worries are far from over. The humidity and the heat can trigger a seizure. What happens if there is no air condition and it takes us a while to get off the island? What will happen with Joe? We were very nervous. September 12th, 1992. The cast and crew of the film Jurassic Park survives the most powerful hurricane to strike Hawaii in over a century. One of the thoughts that run through your head is that, you know, you are on a movie set and it takes a second to realize that this really happened. The filmmakers know that they want to get off the island as quickly as possible to finish the shoot, but air travel is not an option. There were these helicopters. It was like someone had picked up a ball of paper and just scrunched them up like that and thrown them down. They were just mangled pieces of machinery. No commercial planes are allowed to leave the island. Producer Kathleen Kennedy drives to the airport to assess the situation. We knew that the planes were coming over full of supplies and they were going back to Oahu empty. Kathleen had convinced the National Guard to let her get onto one of the helicopters that was going to Honolulu. Once in Honolulu, Kathleen charters a plane and stockpiles it with supplies and medical personnel. The plan is to unload the cargo and have the cast and crew fly back to Oahu in the empty plane. I will attempt to coordinate some transportation for everybody to get to the commercial air terminal. The news is a relief for actor Martin Ferrero, whose autistic son Joe is able to leave Kauai without having a seizure. The cast is able to leave, but they realize the residents of Kauai must live with the Niki's destruction. I um, pay tribute to them because um, we were just a film crew and film crews come and go, but the people of Kauai themselves, this was their lives. About two weeks after Aniki hit, Steven Spielberg and a camera crew fly to Oahu to finish up the shoot that was lost to the hurricane. We had had one more last day of shooting. Essentially the, uh, the sequence in the film with the uh, gallimimus that chase the kids and the professor. Filming of Jurassic Park wraps in November of 1992. There was a, a lot more emotion, I think, in, in the goodbyes out of this because it had been a shared experience for all of us. You know, we had gone through something that was not a regular event. When the film opens the following summer, it becomes an instant classic, raking in over $350 million at the box office. In 
It even includes shots of Hurricane Aniki that Steven Spielberg took from the beach. We were a lot closer as a result of that, you know, that we'd all been through something, we'd experienced something together, and uh, that's something you don't forget. Hurricane Aniki wreaks $1.8 billion in damage, changing the island of Kauai forever. This is Mother Nature's fury at its, at its most fierce. It was quite surreal. The cast and crew of Jurassic Park survived the catastrophe. Until you go through a disaster like that, you're not completely aware of the power that the natural world around you really had. Today, actress Ariana Richards is a professional painter. She looks back fondly on the making of Jurassic Park and a 13th birthday she and the rest of the cast and crew will never forget. I do see the hurricane as an adventure. We had an adventure within an adventure. For the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Your local forecast is next.